are still going to be good. They got that defense, and that kid learned a lot from Aaron. Unfortunately, 9-11 uh, is just a bad date for New York. If you're thinking, who could possibly say something so stupid? That would be O.J. Simpson, former NFL superstar, among other things. 9-11 was just a bad day for New York. Yep. I would agree. Statistically speaking, um, this is interesting to see. Daily Sports Podcast, news, narratives, takes gambling, and O.J. Simpson apparently out and about trying to make money. Underdog Fantasy is interviewing him, which is rock bottom for them. They must be really needing some content or money. It's just a fantasy startup organization or something. I don't know. Whew. Thursday night football tonight. The Minnesota Vikings against your Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles are favored by six and a half. I've got some bets. I've got some money on it. I live in a state that can gamble. Finally. God. It is time. Talk about some college football. Um, are there games tonight? There are. A ranked team is playing. Miami is playing Bethune-Cookman tonight. So, Virginia and Maryland are playing in an ACC game. Oh, well, that is weird. That, that, you know what? That shouts to those guys. That's a good non-conference game for both those teams. And shouts to Virginia for playing an SEC team on the road and a Big Ten team on the road. Toughest schedule in America, probably. We'll preview this week in college football on Football Friday. Let's get to some news. Someone named Maddie Glab. Who is Maddie Glab? You're wondering. Why are we talking about her? Here's Maddie Glab, team reporter for at Buffalo Bills. She works for the organization. She is hashtag Mizzou made. All these journalism people. There she is. This is what she looks like. What's up, Maddie? How's it going? That's cool. Why are we talking about Maddie Glab? That is a great question. Well, because assume the mics are always hot. Let's listen to what Maddie has to say. Are we ready? Check, set, hut. So if you're going to hear that, <clears throat> I've got the quote. So she works for the team, and the reporters are in the room, and they're like, hey, we would like to talk to some people. And she's like, I think they're going to try to get you guys Stefan Diggs and Micah Hyde. And the guy was like, well, go in there and make him get him. And she's like, that's not happening. Steph will look in my face and say, hey, F you. That's how he treats everybody. Hot mic. Everybody heard it. It's recorded on the internet.com. Here is her response. I want to take ownership for what I said today. I'm very sorry for what I said and meant no ill will. I respect the hell out of Stefan Diggs, and he has been one of my favorite players to cover. You're not covering anything. You're a team mouthpiece. He has great character and treats us and treats us media with lots of respect. This is written by a professional. Lots of respect. He takes time out of his day to talk to us, which he doesn't have to do. For context, media was waiting for players to come out of the press conference when a reporter joking with me to go get Steph on, and I said, I don't have control over him. Steph marches to the beat of his own drum, and I love that about him. He has a playful relationship with our video department, so that's why I probably wouldn't say yes to me grabbing him for an interview. I should not have said what I said, and I apologize for that. Steph is not in the wrong. I am yes. I do think... I do think there's some smoke here. I think Steph is a bit of a diva. There are not a lot of diva wide receivers out there anymore, but I think he is one of those, and the vibes in Buffalo are atrocious. The vibes with him and Josh Allen seemingly out of nowhere got bad. I don't think Steph wants better stats, but so the problem is that people... This is what's going on with Buffalo and kind of Kansas City. They started scoring all these points in Kansas City, and then Buffalo was like, hey, we have a quarterback that's kind of like Mahomes, and they really... they are like. There are like three or four Mahomeses now, but for a while there were only two Mahomeses, Mahomes and then kind of Josh Allen. And so Buffalo beat the team to beat Kansas City. The problem is that a bunch of other teams built teams to beat anyone. What Detroit is doing and see, uh, Pittsburgh is kind of doing it and the Niners and just tough, hard-nosed football. They started taking away these deep shots and now Mahomes has adjusted well and Allen hasn't. He wants to keep doing that fun stuff and Stefan Diggs really liked doing that stuff. The problem is that your opponent fucking covers it. And they were like, hey, well, you need to score 14 play drives. And they're mad at each other because it wasn't the way it used to be, I guess. I'm not 100% sure. So 
Vibes in Buffalo are atrocious. That's a reporter. And here's just some unnecessary drama. Like, why have the drums? You don't need it. It's going to be totally fine. Drama in Chicago. Chase Claypool um, getting absolutely roasted as the laziest, worst player in the NFL. Um, multiple people who do breakdowns, these internet people, some of who played the game, other people who just have YouTube channels, just like, wow, worst effort of all time. Cannot possibly fathom how lazy this guy is. He's going to get scratched this week, and he'll probably get cut. He, he might. It's possible he's done in the NFL if he gets cut. Like, nobody's going to pick him up. He's just, the laziness is crazy. The cockiness. He had such a good rookie year, and since then he's been among the very worst players in the NFL. So that's that's some buzz happening. Chase Claypool, the, the vibes in Chicago are atrocious. Over the weekend, there were AI robots at the Los Angeles Chargers game. Pull them up on your screen right now. Here they are. Look at him. The sound is annoying. Um, are these real AI robots? Or are they actors? Because I'll be honest with you. They seem like actors <laughs> dressed up like robots. The funny thing is, it's really sad that they are doing this stunt to have robots in the crowd because no one's going to their games. Look at the upper decks. Nobody wants to go to their games because they suck. Let's go back to the Chicago bad vibes. Uh, Dan Whiterer, who works for Chicago Tribune, Say, quote, in my time covering the NFL, I can't really remember a time where on the Wednesday of week two, a building seemed so apparently shaken by and or short on answers for what happened in week one. These next five days are uh, our response time and should tell us a lot about this group's pluck. Bad. They'll be fired. Simple. Just told you. Just told you. Very simple. Shouts to the Detroit Lions and the Kansas City Chiefs. 27.5 million viewers. The most watched kickoff game since 2015. And I don't even remember who played. 2015 was a million years ago, man. Was it the Patriots? After they beat uh, the, the, the Seahawks through that stupid interception on the goal line of the Super Bowl? I'm sure Mark Wahlberg was there, and I'm sure they kicked someone's ass. Um in the open game of the season, Aaron Rodgers says the night is always darkest before the dawn and I shall rise yet again. Oh, God, he's going to be so much more annoying when he's injured. Vibes in Minnesota are bad. Vibes in Tampa Bay are high. Week one, all overreactions, underreactions, a lot of clever podcast content this week. Let's listen to uh, Baker Mayfield talk some shit. One of the best shit talkers in the history of sports. Mayfield pulls it back. He's going to run it himself. Wait up, little boy. Get your weight up, little boy. Get your weight. You got, dude, you got stiff arm and shoulder drop by Baker Mayfield. That's tough. Let's listen to it one more time. Get your fucking weight up, little boy. I have no idea who number seven is, but that is a tough, that is a tough look because Baker was miked. And so they played that sound. Can't say I blame him. That's uh, uh, objectively hilarious. Let's go to baseball. Ronald Acuna Jr. probably going to win the NL MVP and probably the best player in baseball. Play-by-play -play announcers for the Phillies coming off as old white men who are perhaps racist. Let's listen. Michael Harris oh. breaks for a second, and he can stop and walk the rest of the way. That ball was crushed. And Ronald Acuna gets closer and closer to 40. He's now at 37. Making fun of the Eagles, which is weird. And Atlanta has the lead. Unless that's his thing, I don't know. I don't know if that's actually his thing, the wings. Getting booed hard. I'm making fun of the Eagles, I think. Well, it wasn't two pitches in action, but it was three pitches in Bruh. action. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, that was crushed. I don't think Wheeler even turned around. Bruh. Listen. Michael Harris oh. breaks for a second, and he can...
I like our guys to act like they've been there before. So apparently that's not the clip. I just got baited by a tweet. Regardless, if someone said, I like our guys to act like I've been there before, I hate that. That being said, I like that. He did that celebration. I'm a big fan of that. That was an appropriate celebration. If he's making fun of the Eagles, how do I say this? It comes off as super de duper jealous about the attention that football gets. Baseball is the big man on campus until football starts. It, every city except kind of New York. It just it is what it is, and they're really good. I'm gonna check the MLB stand. You know we should do a weekly check in on the MLB <laughs> just to make sure that it's still alive. Orioles are gonna win that division. It's gonna go Orioles, Rays, and Blue Jays, and the Yankees and the Sox are at the bottom. That is fucking hilarious. Those are the big money teams, and the two poor shitty teams are way out in front of the of the cities of Toronto, Boston, and New York, <laughs> Baltimore, and Tampa. And Tampa doesn't even want a team. They're trying to get rid of it. The Twins are going to win their division, worst division maybe in the history of sports. <clears throat> Perhaps the Astros are good. Booey for them. The Phillies are, this is wild. The Phillies are 12 games over 500. They have a 551 winning percentage. They are 12 games over 500. They are 17 games behind the Braves. What? The Phillies would be in first place, second place in the NL Central with the shot at first place, two or three games back. They would be in second place in the NL West. The Braves have a 17-game lead on the third or fourth best team in the league. Well, I don't know if that's exactly true. Not quite. But the, the Orioles are sick too, though. The Orioles might win this thing. How's the, how's the Central going? The Reds, what a, what a fun story that was. They got to start winning some ball games. It's not going to happen. Brewers, Cubs, and Reds trying to make the playoffs. A bunch of teams that we don't have to pay attention to. Let's go to Thursday Night Football. I have some bets for you. Let's open up their bet slip. Uh, kickoff is tonight at some time. Always 25 minutes too late. This is 7.16 p.m. No, really? Let's find out. NFL. What is your NFL scores? Google.com. They always kick these games at like 8.20. No way. 8.15. Yeah. God damn it. Oh, why? Anyway, listen. <laughs> I have... Right now, it's minus 6.5 for Philly. I have Philly at minus 7.5 on an early line. I should have waited for the actual spread to come out, but I like them. I don't think Minnesota. Minnesota does. They're rebuilding. They just don't know that they're rebuilding, so that's, it's going to get sad for them. Um, these are the bets I like. Jalen Hurts over passing yards, under rushing yards. I think that they're going to try to... Because they didn't really do a lot of preseason stuff, the Eagles, and they look... They, I think the Patriots could have perhaps the best defense in the NFL this year. Said it meant it, and I don't think they looked bad against the Patriots. I think the Patriots are an elite defense in the NFL. The Vikings are not, so I think that they're going to try to prove that. That being said, Hunter Henry um, was the best tight end in the NFL in week one. He played against the Eagles. The Eagles got rid of some of their cover linebackers, and now they're filling in with rookies and some other guys, and I think TJ Hawkinson is going to go off. So Hurts over passing yards, under rushing yards, and TJ Hawkinson over passing yards. I'd like the Eagles to cover... And win by a shit ton. Because I think Minnesota's done. Donezo. Tomorrow's Football Friday. Are there any cool college games? Not really. Is LSU going to lose to Mississippi State? No. Oklahoma might lose to Tulsa, though. That one feels weird, doesn't it? That one feels weird. I have to figure out which community college Michigan is playing this week in Tennessee at Florida. All right. I'll see you tomorrow for Football Friday. First one of the year. Should be the second one, but, you know, here we are. Whatever. <laughs>